welcome to export kit in this example we're going to take a deeper look at our HTML exports and how they translate from your individual artboards and you can see a list of our artboards here to the individual elements that are rendered in the artboards and we're going to see how each element is rendered and the code for each so if we go ahead and we just export uh, basically everything we're going to take a look at the output itself afterwards And let's just export to HTML5. Ensure we have no artboard selected. It will give us uh, all our content exported. And we know the folder this is going to. So let's take a look at the actual folder. Now, each folder will, relatively speaking, tell you the environment that you've exported. So this is HTML5. The name of the first artboard. So in this case, uh, components one. And also a timestamp. So this will individualize each export to contain all the elements that are required for that individual output. So taking a look at our HTML export, you'll see that off the bat what we have are individual HTML files and these are referenced to the artboards that we have within our XD document. So if we take a look, you can see we have calendar one, calendar two, calendar three. This also translates to calendar one, calendar two, calendar three in the output itself. And you'll note here with, for instance, components one, components two, components three, etc. We have them translated to components one, two, three, four, five. Uh, basically going through the list of what is contained within the artboards. Now, it's very important to note the naming convention. In essence, you'll see that all names are translated to lowercase. So in essence, we have capital uh, calendar, but it's translated to lowercase calendar. And spaces as well as complex characters such as a hyphen or any other character that you might use are translated to underscores so you'll see this naming convention within your output itself now if we take a look at the individual html file in our browser let's actually uh, this is components one Let's look at something uh, directly from the design itself. Oh, sorry, we're looking at calendar one. Let's look at components one. Let's reference what we're seeing visually. So if we look, this is pixel perfect uh, straight from our XD design. Now, this is just the visual. You'll note that this is all HTML because you can select each individual element. But let's take a look at the actual code that is rendered to display this. So you can choose your editor of choice. And actually, before we take a look at the code, let's note that what we will get are each individual HTML files. With HTML itself, you'll get a single CSS file. What this will do is this will contain all the styles for each individual page. So this makes it for easy caching. You'll also get all your individual images referenced within a skin folder. So this makes it easy for organization. Now, depending on how many images you have within your artboards, you may end up with a large amount of skins. Uh, but again, that's dependent on your actual project itself. So if we take a look at components, the actual code for it, you'll see that the HTML is neatly organized based on your actual XD structure. And we're going to discuss how this is organized within the content itself. So if we take a look at the head element within HTML, uh, the basic things that are most important are the title. The title will reference the name of the individual artboard, or sorry, I should say the first artboard that is rendered. We will get a style sheet that will reference the single CSS uh, sheet. So in essence, each HTML file will reference the same style sheet. So this will make it easier for caching. You're also going to get a script that will load our Google Fonts auto loader. We may change to the, in the future to automatically add the individual Google Fonts, but um, this is the update we have planned. Now, if we take a look at our body, there are a couple of things that will always be rendered with each project. So you're going to get a content container. This is your main div, so you can control all the elements from there. You're going to get a page with each of the artboards that you have. So this is using the components. You're also going to get a background from that page depending on what you've designed. Now within the page itself, what we have here is we have a map chart and this is just looking at the code. I'm going to reference the actual design uh, in a moment. We have a timeline and let's see what else we have. 
and we have simple cards quick tip so this is just a brief idea as to some of the layering structure within our design itself so if we go back and we take a look at the design you'll note that we have a map chart timeline simple cards quick tip etc if i was to continue down the code we would see each of the folders so each folder has been translated to an individual container to basically map all the elements that container has so you'll see here again uh, timeline you'll see here simple cards quick tip so let's go back to our map now within our map chart we have a background map, United States, China, Algeria, Russia, Australia. This should be the same layering structure that we have within our code. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. We have a map. We have United States, China, Algeria, Australia, Russia, etc. So you'll see that Export Kit does a great job at converting your layer structure to your actual HTML code. And if we were to take a deeper look again, if we go inside the map, you'll see that we have a couple of different, uh, it looks like uh, individual points that are there and they are set. So if we look in the code, let's take a look inside map, you'll see that we have our base image of the map. We have USA, Africa, Europe, uh, we have a secondary Europe and Asia. Now you'll notice here that this has a, now a unique name after Europe. This happens if you have similar names within your design itself. And this also goes back to reference the name of the HTML file that would be created. Naming is very important in Export Kit because what you name your content is how it will be translated in your output. And I'm going to take a deeper look at that uh, in a moment. And this is going to be very important because always remember you may want to edit your code afterwards. So if we go back to our XD design. Now we can simply close this. We note that it will translate each individual folder based on the content that is contained within. But again, naming conventions are very important. When you have multiple names such as line, 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 Export Kit will give it a unique identifier so that you can use this in the output. And there are ways to trick the naming, but we do our best to basically give it uh, the best naming convention it have to avoid individual uh, mishaps of names. So for instance, row one, row two, row three, which is similar to how Export Kit uh, can name elements, which it might add a numerical index. This can sometimes trick uh, the naming convention. So it's very important to use individual and unique names. Now, if we take a look in the output for timeline, we're gonna note line, 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 and we're gonna see how Export Kit dealt with it. So let's go down to timeline. You'll see line, line in essence one, line two, etc. Now this will happen throughout the entire design depending on how many times you're using a, a name uh, basically on multiple layers. Now if we go ahead and we take a look at the CSS, so let's actually just load that. Right off the bat, uh, you'll see that this is a fairly large CSS. This is about 68,000 lines in essence, almost 69. Now what this contains is all the styles for all elements within all the pages in essence. So it's this is going to be a single file that is cached. So this way, each time you load a page, they're not reloading an individual CSS sheet. Now, you could redo this where each page loads a localized style sheet, uh, but that's something I'm going to cover in another video. Now, the CSS styles, again, it's very important for naming convention. What it will do is it will translate each layer name to an actual ID within your CSS file. So you'll see as we go uh, 19 or 190, 500 of 1M. This is not a great name to use within an output because this will make it difficult uh, for a developer to basically reference that element. So again, it's very important to have standardized and unique names within your output, or sorry, I should say within your XD document because this will translate within your output. So we're just gonna take a look at a couple more styles. Uh, you'll note from the design when we looked at the browser, so let's just check that once again. You'll see that it does reference all the styles correctly depending on your XD document. But you'll note again, layer names, very, very important. So this is just a deeper look at how Export Kit will translate and convert all your HTML elements to your output using Export Kit and Adobe XD.